The average person is said to spend 15 minutes in the bathroom. Why not take advantage of that time and learn something new? Presenting the 15-minute podcast on weird facts, crazy details, and funny particulars that you'll be able to enjoy while you're taking a sh- Well, on your free time. Welcome to The Shit with Sam Butler. Welcome to another episode of The Shit Podcast. Thank you guys for joining us once again. Uh, I have a special guest. You guys know him. You've seen him here, but uh, he's here again. Thank you for joining me. I'm Uh, I'm good. Thank you for having me again. Awesome for for having you here. We're actually going to talk about something that I found interesting as a young man, and uh, it keeps coming up, so let's talk about it. We're going to talk about volcanoes and Pompeii. I think everybody, I don't know about here in Mexico, but in the United States, you you, you go to a science fair, and one mm-hmm. of the first things you do is make a volcano. Well, you know? you're assuming that we have science fairs in Mexico, <laughs> first of all. You guys don't have science fairs here? Sometimes, but not really. I mean, they you do like, uh, they usually just make like uh, just little, you know, like those three-piece okay, uh, like cardboard a- things that fold up, and then yeah. that's what you do. <laughs> you don't really do that much experiments. We used to have we used to have a science fair every single year, and if you didn't join mm-hmm. the science fair, it would affect your grade. Yeah. So, like when so, I was in elementary school, the science fair was a big deal to me, mm-hmm. and I did what every kid ever did, and that's where you make out of clay, you make a volcano, mm-hmm. and put baking soda, and. Uh, uh, vinegar uh-huh. <laughs> and food coloring and it just kind of bubbles over and it looks like a volcano yep. right but every kid did that it was a very hacky thing to do so you didn't get a very good grade doing that you know <laughs> I th- when i was in high school it was a private high school so okay. we did have a science fair because it was like the program was kind of you uh, a copy of the u.s high schools you, you, you okay. we didn't wear a uniform we did a lot of yeah, things. Yeah, had lockers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. you know. And then um, we had a, I think I only did it once. It wasn't, you could opt out. Like you didn't it have to do mandatory. it. It wasn't mandatory. Yeah. It wasn't mandatory, but we did, uh, we made a potato cannon. Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you like made, I used to make those in Weldon shop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with like we did it with, with, with just with, with, with a PVC piping and the, uh-huh. and, the, and the end part of it. So we made a little PVC barrel and then we used a, a, a lighter and then we you would just you fill propane? it up. Yeah. What would you use to? Uh, you accelerate? could use a, either propane or uh, one time we just like bought some hairspray. <laughs> oh, okay, well that works. <laughs> and then we just you know you put in hairspray in there. You just basically just jam a potato in it uh-huh. so it seals, and then you turn you it on, it. and then it. And we, then we, I, I think we broke a window. Yeah, yeah, they're they're bad. I mean, yeah. they're they're loud. Um, we used to we had a welding shop. I mean, mm-hmm. I was in welding class, and we would use acetylene. Okay. Now, if you don't know anything about acetylene, it's like 15 times more volatile than like propane. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. So when, you, when you're when you working with acetylene, you're not supposed to use it beyond five pounds per square inch of pressure. You can get away with like eight pounds. But what happens, and even the regulator has red lines after 15 pounds. Mm-hmm. It just blows it, up? It, well, the friction inside the hose is enough to ignite it. Oh, shit. Okay. Right? So mm-hmm. if you're using it, Beyond 15 PSI, you could blow the whole... And one bottle of acetylene with a bottle of oxygen is enough to, like, take out a whole city block. Right? So, it's like it's a it's a big deal. Damn. So, we would use this... <laughs> we were playing around with acetylene. And I remember I, I thought I was being really cute doing it. And uh, all I could hear was ringing in my ears. Oh, yeah, you know, so it's, it's no fun. Where you're... If you're going to do something like that... Where um, hearing protection, ear condoms, ear, <laughs> <laughs> ear plugs, you know. But uh, we had them in the shop. But you yeah. know, we were kids; we didn't think anything of it. But I mean, again, it's just one city block. It's not the whole city of Pompeii that you're gonna yeah. take out. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, uh, a city block. It de- it depends too, because like a city block in New York is a lot different than a city block in El Paso. Well, yeah, a city block in El Paso has like a gas station and like it's, two and a house or two. They're just really long blocks, you know. Yeah, and then in in New York, you have like fifteen hundred families living yeah. in one block. Well, the other thing too, like New York blocks are uh, to me, New York blocks are shorter. Yeah. Right, and they're like, you're gonna walk 12 blocks, and you're like, wow, that sounds like a long ways, but mm-hmm. it's not that far because it's literally each building, you know. Yeah, it's, it's like Mexico City. Yeah, because that's my reference because I've never been to New York. Yeah, well, we'll get to New York. We're going there this summer. Yep. <laughs> yeah, but uh, um, 
we're going to talk about Pompeii, Mount Vesuvius. And, of course, this is one of the biggest archaeological sites in the entire world. And it, it uh, apparently, I mean, the way that this thing worked, there's different types of volcanoes. There's different types of lava. There's different. Um, it's a whole thing. Like it's, a, yeah, I, don't, I feel like I don't know enough about volcanoes, even though we have a lot of them in Mexico. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, that's the other thing I was going to say. Um, Popocatepetl, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's the one that's in Mexico City. Mm hmm um yeah i've seen that thing it's pretty nice it's pretty cool looking you know mm -hmm. i don't know i've never seen it uh uh spewing ash but i think it still does no, right? when it does that it's terrible like my family who lives there and they they told me the stories and it's like you, i mean it's not like the air is already you know clean, clean. enough to yeah then breathe. You, you spew an ash. and then you have ash in it and it's just terrible i know that when i was a little little kid there was uh, a volcano at mount st helens mm -hmm. uh, washington state And that was like, I want to say it was 80 or 81. Mm -hmm. and I think I was, a, I was a little kid. And my brother actually brought back some of the ash that he collected out there. Cool. But there was a lot of stories of people that were just, I'm not going to, I'm not going to leave, you know. So there's different types of volcanic eruptions. There's magma eruptions that involve decompression of gas with magma that propels it forward. Um. Mm -hmm. Phreatic eruptions, which are driven by heat from magma, creating a superheated steam. Okay. Yeah. Freo magmatic eruptions that are caused by the interaction of water and magma. So mm -hmm. you could get hit by any of these things. So you would think, you know, it's just, you, you would think, okay, it's just ash and lava. But it could literally boil you to death. Yeah. Right. And that's kind of what happened in Pompeii. Um The ash hit them so fast that it actually baked them. Hmm. So they were baked, but they were still preserved, right? So that it didn't like. Yeah, it's crazy how you you see pictures and they they're still finding things. I just read a thing a couple of weeks ago where where they were just like exploring and they found like a like a food court. Yeah, <laughs> there were like a little stall with like what where food vendors would go, and yeah. it's still preserved. Like you still see. There, it was covered in ash, but you still see the original painting on it and everything. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, you know, one of the things that, that I read when I was doing the research for this is that the citizens of Pompeii were under the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. They're actually Greek. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right? So they were more... It was like a tourist attraction. Mm -hmm. Because it was Greek people um, that were under Roman rule. But that would make sense. They had to sell euros. You know, <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're like, come get your pita. <laughs> Greek people make good food, but uh, the Greek salad is the greatest. But um, they actually had no word for volcano. That was okay. one. Of the, that was one of the shit things that you're like, what? What really? You don't yeah. have a you wasn't in their vocabulary. Okay, which explains why they got caught. <laughs> <laughs> Like, um, that thing can hurt me. I don't even know what to name it. <laughs> yeah. They, they, you know, this is uh, what one of the articles that I read. It said, the story of Pompey's demise becomes even more tragic after historians discovered Pompey citizens had no knowledge what the nearby Vesuvius actually was. Having no knowledge of any volcanoes in the city merely thought it was a large mountain. Well, I mean, it's tragic to us. Yeah. But it was kind of instant to them, right? Yeah, I mean, like, I don't know if it was instant, but I... I, I think it was instant. Because <laughs> there's a... They found... Recently, they found a guy masturbating, and he was, like, literally um, mm. holding it in his hand. Well, yeah, that's when, true. When he got hit, I think My that, opinion. that uh, he could have... If he'd have known, <laughs> <laughs> he'd have covered up. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know, it's like, he'd have been like that kid when the, when your mom accidentally opens the door and goes, oh, mom, you know, that kind of a thing. You know? I'm going to beat it to death. <laughs> <laughs> and he did. Yeah. So um, the actual word volcano wasn't invented until the 1610s with the word derived from Vulcan, the Roman god of fire. Okay, that you makes know? sense. And it gave the, gave the same attributes to the Greek I'm, I'm going to mess this up. Hephaestus. He, Hephaestus. Sure. Right. <laughs> I'm not there's, even going to try. Yeah, there's going to be people going like, what? But I don't speak Greek. So um, so it was ironic. Um, there's a 
the Romans dedicated a whole day to Vulcan called Vul Vulcanalia, a festival held annually on the 23rd of August where people would throw small fish into the fire as sacrifices. It's ironic that the Pompeians worshipped a god who in their eyes destroyed them, of course. And nowadays, well, we don't believe in, in that. Okay, so they would have like a festival just yeah, to celebrating the fact that the a god mountain of fire. can kill you? <laughs> the god of fire, but they didn't... They didn't okay. They didn't put two and two together. <laughs> you like, know? Oh, okay, yeah, that so. mountain, <laughs> and, you know, um, they actually had great teeth. That was something that they discovered. When Pompeii was rediscovered and excavated in the 1800s, the skeletal remains of the citizens were revealed. These remains held vital information of these ancient beings showing their cause of deaths and their customs, as well as their physical attributes. The people exploring the remains are not just archaeologists, but multidisciplinary team of computer engineers, radiologists, doctors, historians, and orthodontists. Using their I mean, what difference does it make? I mean, they're like, oh, yeah, well, this guy is burned to death, but his teeth, though. But I think it's amazing because a lot of civilizations back then didn't have good teeth. A lot of civilizations now Today don't. don't have good teeth, you know? So for them to have, I mean, it makes you kind of wonder, like, how is it that they were able mm -hmm. to, and I know the Romans used to brush their teeth with urine, mm -hmm. but I don't know if that had anything to do with it, you know? But um, they were able to figure out they had good teeth. Another thing, they had brothels everywhere. That was well, one. Yeah, what else are you going to do? There's no Netflix. There's no, <laughs> they, they Netflix. There's no podcasts. <laughs> they were Netflix and chilling. <laughs> before. But, hey, baby, come over and Netflix and chill. Uh, well, no Netflix, but just chill. That's <laughs> you cool. know? I mean, they, they definitely were not chill by the end, though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, throughout the excavation, archaeologists have discovered 25 brothels scattered all over the city. There are numerous preserved erotic uh, frescoes within the brothels, which display the services in an illustrative menu. Okay, cool. It's right. like, well, I don't know how to read, but I know I want that. <laughs> I want that. <laughs> Whatever she's doing with her mouth, I want that. <laughs> <laughs> they were Greek, though, so it was more like, I want, <laughs> I want him to do that to my butt. <laughs> you know? Uh. That's a um, tossed Greek salad. <laughs> that's a tossed Greek salad. <laughs> that's pretty funny right there. <laughs> the largest, most preserved brothel found is in Lup Lupinare. The name comes from Lupa, she-wolf, which was the slang meaning for prostitute. Okay. Saying this is Well, yeah, important. I think that comes from uh, Luperca was the, the one that, you know, fed the... the yeah. Romul, is it Romulo y Remon in Spanish. What's it in English? Like Romulus. Romulus and, mm. and the other guy. <laughs> and Remo yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah, Remo reamed you. Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> but they say that this this might not have proved anything um, as far as them being more sexually active than us and modern society. What they think it was more... all Because they had phalluses painted everywhere. Okay. You know... Which my buddy Israel, I don't know if you saw his, his TikTok today, but yeah, he, just drawing he, he's uh, just dicks drawing, on the snow. He's just dicks on the snow in San Antonio. Shout out to Israel, but <laughs> dude, I, I was just like <laughs> literally cracking up that he was just drawing them everywhere. I they say that that was more of their sense of humor. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I right. mean, you go to any like touristy place here in Mexico, and you're gonna find T-shirts or like shot glasses. With oh yeah, with the, their dicks out and yeah. Yeah, I, I see the uh, like in Vegas, you see a lot of the the, the cups with boobs on them and yeah. stuff like that. You know, so that was they say that they think that was more of a sarcastic, funny mm -hmm. thing that they would do, and graffiti was very common. Graffiti today, um, we think of graffiti, and we think of you know gang writing and stuff like that, but they wrote on everything. So there was po poetry. There was all kinds of stuff written on walls, uh, mm -hmm. something as elaborate as a, a as a poem, and something as mundane as just gibberish. Okay, you know. So graffiti was part of the thing. The article here says um, tangible testimonies of citizens of everyday life, spanning from poetry to crude messages. There are many graffiti works, which I think most <laughs> for a good time write to and then Roman numerals. Roman numerals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> they, they didn't realize they were just going into bathroom stalls the whole time, <laughs> you know. Yep. But 
I don't think it's that crazy because even here uh, at Waco Tanks in, in El Paso, there's, mm -hmm. there's hieroglyphics. Yeah, you know, they're pretty cool. So I, I mean, um, yeah, I've I've been able to go up into the caves and see them. Yeah, and you, even here in the restroom, right here, there's <laughs> somebody wrote some some guy named the Borre apparently wrote on the. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who that guy is, but he's sitting over yeah. there. Yeah, but they write. Um, Construction on mm -hmm. uh, you see it all the time in, mm -hmm. in the porta potties. You know, uh, one of the one of the ones that I thought was hilarious was like, I got three jackasses, I got two in the field, and I got one reading in the porta potty. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But um, so they had messages, insults, all kinds of stuff, and of course we talked about it already being Greek. So the bottom line is volcanoes are made up of different. They have different types of eruptions. Uh, of course, you know, in Hawaii, people go and watch the slow lava movement yeah. and stuff like that. That's crazy. I, I think that's pretty cool, and the island keeps getting bigger that way. Did you know that there's, like, a... I, I, if a big enough volcano erupted, it would cause some sort of... Climatic uh, change, clima right? Yeah, like a nuclear winter kind of thing. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Like, you, <laughs> like we're all like, hey, we're going to drive green energy cars. <laughs> like, no, just you know, just make a volcano blow up yeah. and then we'll be fine. I mean, yeah. the people around the volcano won't. But, <laughs> but wouldn't it be ironic that, that we spend all this money on green energy, where our carbon footprint is small, we're using uh, uh, geothermal mm -hmm. uh, energy, to, to you know, we're, we're wind energy, all this stuff. And we're like, oh, we finally did it, guys. The ozone layer is saved, and then the next day there's a volcano, and it just messes everything up, you know. That'd be, I mean. That'd probably be the way it works. <laughs> yeah, know? that'd probably be just Mother Nature being like, fuck you guys. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have been nothing but a pain in my ass for thousands of years. <laughs> yeah, so. Here you go. Go fuck yourselves. Yeah, it just shows how smart we're not. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, that pretty much wraps up this episode of The Shit. We're talking about Pompeii. There's a lot of stuff to talk about there. There's a lot of research you can do. But uh, we just kind of wanted to go over it with you guys. And thank you for joining us. Thank you for being mm -hmm. here again. How can people find you on social media? Uh, people can find me everywhere as at Ningun Eduardo. That's N-I-N-G-U-N. And then my Eduardo. name. Eduardo. Yeah. And there'll be a little uh, screenshot there a little that you can get and follow him on social media uh check out the other podcast thank you everybody that listens to this podcast in english from i get messages from all over mexico and south america saying that they really appreciate the english podcast that i have one guy that says he's going to use it in his uh in his class he, he teaches classes so cool he, so That's it's like conver cool. conversational yeah. english so uh i'm messing it up but thank you for watching and um uh, Thank you guys for joining us. You can find me as uh, Tu Amigo Sam. That's T-U Amigo Sam on all of my uh, social media, as well as my YouTube uh, channel. It's Tu Amigo Sam um, on Spotify and different platforms. I'm as Sta Cagado Podcast. Uh, thank you guys. And that's it for this episode. Thank you for being here once again. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Oh, yeah. Like and subscribe. Ha, 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 ha.